Romans. Romans chapter 6, 1 through 6. The apostle says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. The Holy Scriptures teach us in the beginning of the book of the Revelation, or excuse me, of Genesis, that God saw that everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. As we know, God created Adam and Eve after his own image. Everything that he had made, he saw that it was very good. He created Adam and Eve so that they were perfect and righteous before God. There was a blessed communion between them and their creator. But then we read as in Genesis 3 that Adam and Eve were tempted of Satan. And in that temptation, we find, of course, their disobedience that led them to their fall and to the fall of all their posterity. Under that cursed, sinful obedience came death. So the Apostle Paul says in Romans 5, 12, Wherefore, as by one man, that is Adam, Sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so sin passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. But there is good news, and that we call the gospel, the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming and has come to save and to redeem his people. God is a very merciful God, and uh, he promises to give everlasting life to all who trust in his beloved son who died upon the cross for us. God, as he created all things miraculously, he also miraculously brought life again, life out of death, and that was through faith in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So God's gift of everlasting life from the condemnation of sin and misery is clearly revealed throughout the scriptures. Especially we find this in John 3.16. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so then we believe that as the scriptures teach that we are justified by grace through faith alone, in the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ, all who are united to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith shall desire to walk in newness of life. As the Apostle Paul began to proclaim the doctrine of grace, saved by grace through faith alone, there were those gainsayers that would come along and say, well, if that were true, then... Wouldn't it just give people a license to want to sin because they're saved by grace? In fact, they would say, well, let us, that Paul is teaching, and they were falsely saying this, that we could say, well, let us sin that grace may abound. And we know that was not at all what the Apostle Paul was teaching. And we're going to see as we get into some of these verses here uh, why that is so false. 
Now, Paul then, uh, beginning in verse 1 of Romans 6, he refutes uh, his adversary's accusation by saying, if we're saved by grace through faith alone, then uh, let us sin that grace may abound. He refutes that by asking this question. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And then in verse 2, he answers that question. God forbid. Now, you, Paul used God forbid frequently, but when he did, uh, he meant it to be a very strong uh, negative. God forbid that we would look at the gospel as a license for sin. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin? And so that's what's leading us then into the substance of the message tonight is that the true gospel of grace does not make us want to sin that grace me about. The total, it's just totally opposite of that. And so we are dead to sin as Christ died on that cross. We have become dead to sin. And we are not desirous as we are in Christ. Desirous to live on in a life of sin. So dear listener, uh, let us uh, pay close attention then here to Paul's expounding of this very teaching. That the gift of salvation by grace through faith will make us want to Walk in newness of life. Paul repudiates the false claims of his adversaries. You know, it's no sooner as the gospel is faithfully preached, you'll, you'll have many adversaries that will come along and gainsayers. Uh, Paul writes to Titus and he says that you, you're going to have to deal with the gainsayers. Or those are the people that are opposing you or the obstructionists to the gospel of grace. But uh, we need to be faithful to this uh, gospel, because we know that it is by grace through faith alone uh, that we have life. And so uh, what I want us to note then is two things here in verses 3 and 4. The first here is that uh, true believers by faith are spiritually, spiritually united to Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. We are united to our Lord Jesus Christ death and resurrection spiritually. And then secondly, in verse 4, let us note that Paul declares that true believers, because of their spiritual union with Jesus Christ, as I said earlier, shall walk in newness of life. Now in verses 3 and 4, we note here that true believers by faith are united to Christ's death and to his resurrection uh, it is a spiritual mystery how that we are in union with Christ. And yet it is true. And it is by means of faith that we are in that union with Christ. Note in verses 3 and 4, it says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So then, in being spiritually baptized into Christ's death, our sins are imputed, that union that we have with Christ, our sins are imputed to Christ. And his righteousness is imputed unto us. Now, I know oftentimes that when we think of baptism, we think of, of the actual sacrament of baptism. But uh, baptism has the sense here, being baptized into Christ. Uh, that is uh, the word into is uh, the word ace, it speaks of union with Christ. Uh, even in the Great Commission, it says we are to go into all the nations, bab baptizing them. It says really ace into, not the word 
E-N in, in Greek, but I-N in our English, were baptized into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That speaks of union. So that baptism, even the sacrament itself, speaks to us of our union uh, with Christ. Now, the apostle chides uh, some of these gainsayers. He says, know you not? <laughs> well, this is a very basic teaching of the Christian uh, faith. Know ye not, he says in verse 3, that so many of us as were baptized, notice it says into, this is the word ace, into our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when some time ago I was doing some word study on this matter of being baptized into, and I came to as many of you probably have read that passage, 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 and 2. And uh, I couldn't really uh, find a good explanation for uh, why it is said that the children of Israel were baptized unto Moses. Are you familiar with that passage? We'll look at it. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 and 2. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Apostle Paul said that all, that is Israel, was baptized ace unto Moses, that is the sense here is not the application of water. It's a spiritual understanding of this word baptism, which speaks of our union, uh, the union of the children of Israel uh, with Moses. As they put their backs to uh, Egypt and they followed Moses, uh, they were being baptized unto Moses, following uh, his law and his lead uh, to lead them out of the land of Egypt. So we need to understand that when it speaks about being baptized uh, unto Jesus Christ or into Jesus Christ, it's talking about a spiritual union that has taken place. This is why it's key for us to understand this verse that we won't sin that grace may abound. Once we're in union with Jesus Christ, our, our thoughts are going to want to follow the thoughts of our Lord. Uh, we are going to want to, if we're in union with Christ, we're going to want to walk uh, according to his will and be obedient to him. So just the contrary, to be saved by grace through faith, it does not want to make us sin that grace may abound. Rather, because of our union with Christ, uh, we have, just as Jesus died, uh, for our sins on the cross, and we, by faith, are united to him, we die more and more to sin. And as he was raised from the dead, so also we are raised to newness of life. The old things that we used to do, we don't want to do them, the sinful things, if we're truly born again. And uh, we desire to do the things that, that are pleasing to the Lord. So, the key to understanding then how believers in Christ are dead to sin so that they could not sin that grace may abound and are able to walk in newness of life is that by faith there is this baptism into Christ. And therefore, we cannot go on and desire to sin. There is a passage in John, I think it's 1 John 3.9, but it's, he speaks of us as believers not wanting to live in a life of sin. Now, John, in the first chapter, he says, if any man says that he sins not, uh, he uh, is not speaking the truth. Because we do sin. We still have sin that we wrestle with. We're constantly in our sanctification putting off the old man, putting on the new. But our desire is to walk more and more in lockstep with our Lord and Savior. If we truly have been, by faith, united to our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So we have put on Christ. Paul calls this union that we have with Christ a putting on of Christ. Uh, In Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 through 28, Paul speaks of believers as being baptized into Christ, just like here in Romans, and having put on Christ and being one in Christ. How much clearer can we make it that there is this union with Christ so that we desire to be like him and to walk in obedience to his word? Paul says in Galatians 3, 26 and 28, For ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ... There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ. And so, uh, the, see, we're united to Christ. And then we have a union as believers with each other. And uh, we see then, as uh, the people of God, uh, it is our desire to please the Lord. And so then, in verse 4, Paul says to the believers... Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into his death. Uh, we have uh, been partaker of the benefits of his death. And all of that is communicated to us by the work of the Holy Spirit. By faith in Christ, we are spiritually, as we said, united unto his death. So, as he died for our sins, we are more and more dying to sin. As a believer, you are so united spiritually to Christ that you participate with Christ in his dying for you by your dying more and more to sin. We see in the fifth verse of Romans 6, Paul likens our death to sin with Christ as being like a seed that is planted and dies. Scripture says, and we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. You remember that the Lord Jesus Christ said that we must also die with him. Die to ourself in a spiritual sense. And God works that in us through Christ. In John 12, Jesus says, verses 24 through 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone if it die it bringeth forth much fruit so death is needful spiritually for us to die to the old man in Christ by our union with him and in doing that that's how we then can bring forth spiritual fruit because out of that dying of that seed then up comes the plant and the fruit with it Jesus says, he that loveth his life shall lose it. Uh, He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. In other words, we are dying to sin in Christ daily. And we're looking toward, because of our union with Christ, we're looking toward also being raised in the resurrection, but spiritually renewed as well raised uh, to a new way of living. In the 8th verse of Romans 6, the Apostle Paul says, Now if we be dead with Christ, because of our union with him, we died in and with him in a spiritual sense, we believe that we shall also live with him. So as he died and rose, that also, that union with Christ also connects us to his resurrection. And so we are raised uh, with him. And in that spiritual resurrection uh, then comes the newness of life. Those who have truly experienced the new birth, they die to sin and uh, their hearts or desire is to live, to please the Lord. Remember the Apostle Paul when uh, he was converted on the road to Damascus. He uh, no doubt God had called him 
right there on the spot. And he said, Lord, what would you have me to do? And so he was already with that new heart and ready to do whatever the Lord uh, would have him to do. And that's uh, no exception. That is the way God works in those who truly are born again. They die to sin. Paul no longer wanted to go seek out Christians and take them uh, up to Jerusalem. He was through with persecuting Christians. He was a Christian himself now. And uh, he did, as we know, great work for God in the extension and furtherance of the kingdom of God. Now, going back to verse 4, we want us to note here, <coughs> just look at that a moment. Verse 4, Romans 6, 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And this is uh, the thing that uh, oftentimes has been missing in some people's understanding of soteriology. That is that there is a changed life, a new life, a life that uh, is patterned after the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. We desire to walk in newness of life because of our union uh, with him. And so we want to note here how that those who indeed have uh, been born again of God's Spirit desire to walk in obedience to the Lord. So our spiritual resurrection then produces the new man, the man that desires to do what is righteous, to be obedient to God's Word. In our spiritual resurrection, we have become new creatures and bearing spiritual fruit. If you look at uh, Romans 6 again and reading through verse 6 through 11, here we see the resurrected, spiritually resurrected believer, the one who is truly born again, knowing this, that our old man, what we were before our conversion, is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. So our dying produces spiritually a life, a new life in Christ. Whereby we desire to please him and to fulfill all his holy will in us and through us. Verse 8, he says, Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. This is a good thought to, to put in your mind when temptations come to us. And that is to think what God has done for us in the new birth. He has made us to die to sin. And uh, we are continually dying, putting off the old man and in our sanctification and putting on the new. And so Paul says, likewise, verse 11 Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. So if your heart's desire is to be dead to sin, and it will be to those truly born of God, there's not going to be the desire, obviously, so Paul destroys that argument right here, that you will not want to sin that grace may have been Again, that's just uh, one of Satan's tactics to try to diminish from the gospel of grace. We know that salvation is all of grace and our sanctification is all of grace. And uh, as we in Christ grow more and more, as we grow older, we will begin to more and more produce the fruit of righteousness 
Christ will more and more be seen in and through our lives. And so then our walking in this newness of life is living our lives as new creatures in Christ. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24, we are putting off concerning the former conversation or our way of life of the old man, putting that aside, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And we put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. I do think in this matter of soteriology, the doctrine of salvation, one of the great errors that has uh, been uh, espoused by many, and that is to confuse uh, the justification and sanctification. They're to totally separate. The new birth, we uh, are born again, and then after we have been born again, uh, we begin that new life with Christ, and that is our sanctification. And it's summed up very well in the Heidelberg Catechism, quoting like from uh, Ephesians 4, it's a matter of God's Spirit working in us, of putting off the old man. And we see that as our desire, and we want to put on more the righteousness of Christ. That is, uh, to be more like him. And so we know that if we truly participate in the resurrection of Christ, and all believers do by that union with Christ, we will walk in newness of life. But there are three things that I'd like for us to consider in this newness of life. Those walking in newness of life will seek the spiritual things of, of God and of heaven. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, Paul says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. We ought to think very much about heaven. You know, you've heard that saying, some people are so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. I, I haven't met any people like that. I don't know if we can uh, be too heavenly minded. Uh, but we, we ought to be thinking, our conversation, it says in Philippians, our conversation, our walk, is in heaven because that's where our Savior is. We pray to Him. We converse with Him. And uh, we want to please Him. This is part of walking in newness of life. Those walking in newness of life put on Christ. We actually put on the likeness of Christ. You know, it was said, I believe, of the apostles in the book of Acts that uh, the uh, adversaries of the apostles, they took note of them. They were watching them. They took note of them that they had, they had been with Jesus. They were starting to act like the Lord. They were perhaps even as gest their gestures, things that they were saying. And that's what the, the work of Christ uh, is being done in all of us. We are more and more desiring to be uh, like him. And that's why we read the scriptures. That's why we pray. And we desire uh, that life that is, draws near and near to the likeness of Christ. The apostle again says in Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness. Now, this is, this is putting on Christ. These uh, spiritual graces that we see here mentioned in Colossians 3.12. Mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. So we are called in one body. As we mentioned earlier, there's this union that we each have with Christ, but then as members of the body, there's that union that we have with each other as members of the body. And so uh, we, we see that uh, 
as believers, we have a very close bond with Christ and also with each other. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. You know, I want you to, this week, just think about, I know there's things that really trouble us, uh, whether it's being in a traffic jam and you're running late and you're feeling anxiety, those kinds of things hit us all the time. And just pause and think, my Lord wants me to trust him and, and to have a peaceful heart. We, we ought to train our minds to think that when we get in uh, these uh, anxious uh, moments. Just train our minds to think that we, this is not pleasing to the Lord. I remember I had a very similar situation running way behind time because of all the road construction. A friend was with me, and, and uh, he could tell I was uh, quite anxious uh, because we were going to be way late and, uh, for a meeting where I was supposed to speak. And um, he looked over at me, and he, he said, Are you thankful? <laughs> and, uh, well, I, I wanted to be, <laughs> but uh, you know how it is. It, we should really learn to learn this peace of God in the midst of, of all the, the things that we face, even these mundane things. God wants us to, to trust him at all times and, and to be at peace in our heart. It's, it's, he died for us to bring that peace, and uh, we should experience that daily. So I, I challenge you this week, think about that. And let the, and the, <laughs> the next verse here in Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of God Rule in your hearts. To the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing. This, this is what it looks like to be walking in newness of life. I know we, we read these things, we feel like we've, we fall short, but we ought to keep these things cataloged in our mind so that when we are in these circumstances, we need to think back. This is what the Apostle Paul said in Colossians 3, that I should be, this is how I should be behaving. We need to let the peace of God rule in our heart. And be ye thankful, <laughs> it says. Let the word of Christ dwell in, your, in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father. I'll tell you, if we governed our life that way and walked in that newness of life, we'd save ourselves from getting into a lot of trouble. Uh, because before we uh, go plunging into something that would be a disaster, if we just think for a moment, would this be pleasing to the Lord? Would this be glorifying to God? Now we know uh, the, the first question to the children's catechism, <laughs> what's the man's chief end? It's uh, to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. But this is a reality. This is, this is the way our lives should be lived. And we're, I know we're living in some very difficult times and stressful times. But uh, we need to learn to live on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with peace in our, in our hearts. And asking ourselves about our actions, the way we responded or said something to someone, even in the family or wherever, in the workplace. Was this glorifying to God? And so, or before you think about doing something you know you really shouldn't, just think, well, this is not going to glorify God. So uh, we want to let that be what controls our, our new life. We do all to the glory of God. And so those walking in newness of life will bear fruit. This fruit, and we, we hear about the fruit of the Spirit given to us in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, fruit, faith, and meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So on the one hand, 
the Spirit of God is working in us to crucify the lust of the flesh. On the other hand, we are to be noting these are the things that we are to be putting on the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, it would be well to even memorize those things that are put here in Galatians 5, 22. God's love and joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. This is the way we can control our, our life by God's grace working through us. To let that be our objective, to glorify God. So as we close, then the question we need to ask ourselves is this. Have I received that baptism into Christ? That is the new birth, that union with Christ by faith in him so that my sins are upon him and his righteousness has been imputed unto me. And this is the message that we want to take uh, throughout the Central Valley. This is what is the gospel message. And uh, I pray that uh, God would open up many doors for you as you labor here, as we labor together in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'd love to see many souls come uh, flocking to Christ. It's been my desire uh, here just of late uh, to pray uh, that God would send uh, a spiritual harvest. You know, uh, the scripture says that uh, we are spiritual husbandmen. And that is that we are laboring in the kingdom of God. Husbandmen are those who our God uses to bring forth fruit. And so we would like to see more and more uh, that God would work mightily. And uh, so as husbandmen, we should not only desire, but even expect that God, as we trust in him, that he will send a, a spiritual harvest. Some call it revival. Some call it uh, a visitation of God's spirit, reformation. You know, it comes by different names or titles. But, uh, beloved, I think we would all agree we need to see a great visitation of God's spirit upon his people and uh, in bringing many uh, into the kingdom of God. And so let us be de devoted uh, to glorifying God in all things and seek the furtherance uh, of his kingdom by propagating uh, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we close then with these words of Scripture. If you then be risen with Christ, I leave you with these thoughts. If you then be risen with Christ, as those who profess faith in Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen.